Hey guys, Jeff with OptionBoxer.com again. Got another free spreadsheet for you to check out today. This one's going to be an investment projection calculator. Um, kind of something different about it, I think, versus what you'll find on Google or what you'll find kind of out there in the uh, on the web is that all of the calculations are kind of right here in front of you for you to see exactly what's happening. I don't have anything blocked or locked, so you can see the formulas as they are and you can make alterations if you see uh, necessary. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and run through here really quickly. It is going to be a, a free spreadsheet again. Hopefully uh, I can get some more tools out there, some things that I think you'll find value in um, and get them out there for you to use and, uh, and try out. And of course, always let me know if there's something wrong with it or if you find a calculation error uh, and I'll get it corrected immediately for everyone. Uh, you can do that at jeff at optionboxer.com or in the comments below. Um, as a side note, if you do like the video or if you do like the spreadsheet, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, trying to grow it. And, uh, and I appreciate all that have already subscribed. Uh, but right here at the top, starting balance, you can put whatever amount in there that you want, um, whatever amount you want to invest in, let's say Apple. Uh, let's say you wanted to start with $1,000 and go from there. Uh, contribution amount is uh, how much you're going to contribute, uh, you know, either weekly, monthly, or yearly. You'll see there's uh, three different settings here. Uh, this time horizon field is more or less just for your own um, information. It doesn't really uh, alter the calcula calculations. It will, however, alter the age here. And that way you'll be able to see, uh, you know, if you clicked yearly, it would, of course, go as far out. Um, uh, as you know whatever starting age you use but we'll get to that in just a second uh, the contribution is going to be just the amount that you contribute if you want to adjust the number of contributions um, you would just simply enter the number there if you want the maximum just push 41 because that's the number of uh, uh, I guess spaces available and then uh, the uh, and the reason I put that in there is because I found myself constantly you know, changing the number of contributions because, you know, for myself, I, I want to contribute as little as possible and, and still meet my goals. And you'll see if I change this down to, let's say, 35, it doesn't really change the overall calculation that much at the end. Um, so uh, you end up contributing, uh, you know, money each month that, that really doesn't do you that much good. So you might as well keep that in your pocket and use it to pay bills or whatever else. Anyways, that's my assessment. Uh, but the annual growth rate is just the average rate of return um, over, of course, of, uh, in this scenario, 41 years. Um, you know, you may end up averaging 7%. There's no way to know for sure exactly what the percentage will be. You know, if it's the S&P over the last 20 years, I think it's something like 9.5%. So just an insane return. Uh, over that period of time but there's no way for us to know so we, it ends up being an estimate and so you'll have to come up with your own metric or your own uh, calculation to figure out what you think the uh, the growth rate will be for whatever investment in this example that we're using um, apple uh, the dividend or i'm sorry the initial share price will be whatever apple's currently trading for i'll just leave 120 in there i don't know off the top of my head what they're trading at today and then the uh, dividend yield as whatever the dividend yield is, uh, be aware though, or be advised if you're if you're going to calculate this yearly over the course of you know 41 years, then you can put in whatever the dividend uh, yield is that they list on whatever platform you use. Uh, generally, that's provided in uh, you know as a yearly yield or an annual yield. Uh, but if you are going to do this, let's say monthly, you'll need to. If, I haven't done the calculation, but probably could just divide this 1.5% divided by 12 uh, to give you an average monthly uh, yield and, and just make sure you take that into uh, consideration. Um, if you are going to do monthly or even weekly here, I would probably just go ahead and leave, goodness, I can't click on it. I would probably go ahead and leave the dividend growth rate at zero. Um, the dividend growth rate is the uh, CAGR or the compound annual growth rate for the dividend. So let's say, you know, Apple pays 20 cents per share. Um, last year, but this year they've upped it to 22 uh, cents per share. So that two cents is, uh, you know, some percentage uh, amount and you'd have to do the calculation to figure it out. I've, uh, so that you know, I've included the calculation to determine the growth rate as well as a website, uh, seekingalpha.com to, uh, to see the growth rate. If you want to check that out, it's on the, uh, the blog and there will be a link, um, in the description of this video, uh, along with the link to download the spreadsheet. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, compound growth rate, if you are going to do yearly, uh, then you can enter in whatever it is. I think 3% is probably pretty common for most, but some companies raise their dividend a lot, some not as much. So you'll have to check out those two, uh, two pieces of information to figure out um, what the growth rate is. Anyways, uh, options yield. If you sell covered calls, you, you do cash and cured puts. If you sell spreads, whatever uh, 
uh, way you trade options. I know I trade options quite a bit, so I want to calculate that uh, that return um, into my uh, you know overall uh, figure. And it is again an average. So there's no way to know whether it'll be 10% or you know minus 5% um, at this point. And uh, so you, you would just take whatever your income on options uh, is and then just divide that by the investment amount and just give you kind of a, and be conservative there. Don't, you know, just cause you earned 10% in the last two months, uh, you know, long-term, can you maintain that? I don't know. That's, that's for you to determine, but uh, just be, be realistic there. I usually leave it at one or 2%. And of course, if we're looking at yearly, um, then it'll calculate two, two or 3% per year. Uh, again, if you're going to do weekly or monthly, just make sure you account for that in your calculation here. So it would probably end up being like 0 0.05, something like that, or 0.5%, some, somewhere around there. But then the uh, the big one on everybody's mind today is annual inflation or the inflation rate. Um, currently, it's uh, 8, 9, 10. Pff, goodness, uh, the, the, the gas pump feels like it's at 42%. But uh uh, regardless, um, that's the one that's kind of on everybody's uh, mind right now. And 2%, I think, is the target inflation rate. Uh, but with it being elevated at this time, uh, you know, just kind of be mindful of that and just make sure you uh, adjust the calculation there uh, accordingly. Um, I'm 38 years old, so I just put 38 in there. Um, the, only, the only thing that uh, the starting age and the time horizon really uh, account for is just kind of how it depicts the age for you here. So you can kind of see what age you would be. Um, you know, as you met whatever specific goal you had. Um, and then of course, for me, it goes all the way out to 38. But if you're 24, um, then you, you can meet some of the same investing goals that I will meet, you know, 12 years later. Um, you're just getting started earlier uh, and, and, and therefore better uh, served for it. Uh, but again, those that's the only two things that, that those two uh, boxes do. And uh, more or less, just so you can see, hey, am I calculating this on a weekly basis or a monthly or so forth? I think if you do monthly, yeah, it will change your age uh, accordingly. Uh, but then all the calculations are right there in front of you. And once you've got everything entered in, if you want to see it, of course, down here is going to be, you know, kind of where you land at the end of the, the entire period. Uh, but if you want to see it graphically, I've got a graph built in there. And uh, maybe not the best looking graph I've ever made, but I, I, I wanted to put it in there quickly just so it's there for, for you to view. And then you can see it at different ages, you know, where you would be or possibly could be. And uh, in that way, it's uh, available if you're interested in it. But uh, but that's all for this video. Um, I hope you'll check it out. And if you like the video, if you like any of the stuff that I'm uh, putting out there, please do consider, again, subscribing to the channel. It really helps me, and I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.